Hey there! I'm MC Haggis, the world's greatest Scottish rapper, and uh, this is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. Hi. Yeah. This month we're learning about individuality. Discovering who you are meant to be so you can make a difference. <laughs> And I just came back from the Haggis family reunion. It, it was huge, and it was so great to see everyone. But but you know what I discovered? Hey. No, no, not that everyone needed a bath, although that might be possible. I discovered that everyone there was an accountant. Hey. It's true. Everyone else in the family is an accountant. They count things. They count money. We're an accountant clan, and I was the only one who has done something different, so... I got to thinking, maybe I shouldn't be the family oddball, the the maverick, or the one with real talent, if you will. Yeah, I, I. All right, I, I'll get to the point. I'm going to try to be an accountant and give up being a rapper. Hey! Seamus, this is what I need to do in order to carry on the Haggis family tradition. As part of my transformation from this day forward, I will no longer be MC Haggis. What will be known by my birth name, Oleander Haggis. Aye, aye, aye. Oleander. No longer will my voice be my instrument that defines who I am. From now on, this will be the instrument of my legacy. Hey, This abacus. Yes. This belonged to my grandfather, Alistair Haggis. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure how you yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Make them spin real hard like a... Now stop it, Seamus! Change is always hard, but this is something I must do. Oh, I forgot something. My grandfather's clip-on tie. <clears throat> Thank you. Hey! Seamus, are you all right, my friend? Hey! I'm sorry! I know this is a shock, but I feel like it's what I should do as a part of my family. Hey! Wait, you, you think it's okay for me to be me, the me I want to be? I've already discovered how I was meant to be, and my rapping helps others and makes a difference? Hey! You, you're right! Seamus, I'm MC Haggis, and it's okay to be me! Let's rap about it. Kick it. Oh. I'm MC Haggis. It's okay to be me. I'm a rapper by trade. That's how God gifted me. My good friend Seamus just helped me see. That's who I was meant to be so I can make a difference. And that's individuality. Word. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. It's an abacus, yeah. Hey. All right. I was a family heirloom. I had that reevaluated on Antique Roadshow and I was gonna pay for my kid's college, but looks good there in the dirt. What are you doing? Hey! Oh, I got you.
Hey everybody, I'm Graham, candy connoisseur, and I'm here to talk about individuality. Individuality is discovering who you are meant to be so that you can make a difference. Every single one of us is an individual. We were all made by God in our own unique ways. When you look at yourself in a mirror, you can see all the work that went into making every little detail. I see you. And it's not just what you look like that makes you an individual. Your whole personality sets you apart from everyone else in the world. You should really look at yourself sometime. Really look at yourself inside and out. Like when I look at myself, I think I'm pretty cool. Like a big bowl of ice cream. Uh, and there are things about myself that I like. I love that I'm good at problem solving. I have this ability to understand when something is wrong and immediately think of ideas to fix it. Oh, and I like that I'm funny. Like, have you ever heard of this one? Knock, knock. Oh, right. <laughs> I need someone in the room for that joke. Anyways, I, the punchline is, I didn't know you could yodel. Oh, I think I'm funny. Actually, now that I'm really looking, I'm thinking there are some things that I don't like about myself. Like, sometimes I procrastinate. That means when there's something that needs to be done by a certain time, sometimes I wait till the last possible minute to get it done. Oh. And sometimes, I have a bad temper. When someone disagrees with me about certain things, I can get really angry really fast. Uh, and sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, I can be really selfish. There, a little cool, a little gross, and a lot messy. That's how I can see myself sometimes. Maybe you see yourself that way. Well, after today's story, you might discover that there's a whole new way to see yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm really gonna eat that. See? I'm funny. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 9. Verses 9 through 13. Everyone in the shore town of Capernaum knew who Matthew was. You may also call me Levi. But few people actually liked him. Well, that's rude. Truth is, Matthew had put himself in an awkward situation. He was Jewish, like his relatives and friends, but he chose to work for the hated Roman government. Just trying to make a living. Matthew was a tax collector for the Romans, and tax collectors were known to lie about the amount of money people owed. Five gold pieces. But, but it was only three last year. Five, and not a shekel less. After collecting money, the tax collectors would keep the extra for themselves. Many of them grew rich by robbing the poorest people in their towns. In fact, tax collectors and sinners were considered to be the same thing. Hey, I work hard. 
But no matter how hard Matthew tried to polish his own image, deep down, he knew how others saw him. He heard their whispers as he crossed to the other side of the street to pass his booth. I do not know how that man sleeps at night. He's the worst, doing the Romans' dirty work. But one day, the crowds of Capernaum were full of different news. Did you hear about Jesus of Nazareth? The rabbi? He's not only a teacher. This morning, he made a lame man walk. That's just talk. My son was there. He saw it with his own eyes. The whole city was ablaze with the story. And even Matthew, who was tucked away in his tax collector's booth, was fascinated. Maybe the man just had a limp or something? Oh no, this Jesus has real power. He cares about people. Well, maybe. Anyhow, you owe three gold pieces. Three? How are we supposed to eat for the rest of the season? Take it up with the governor. I'm just doing my job. I bet Jesus would have something to say to you. Next. Within a short time, the market became even more crowded. Jesus! Jesus is coming this way! From his booth, Matthew craned to see. Though he was curious, deep down, he had to admit that no rabbi would have kind words for him. I'm a fool. Even my own people hate me. Suddenly, the crowds parted. Just down the street, Matthew could see a tall man with a rugged face and piercing eyes. A group of common fishermen followed at his heels. It's Jesus. Matthew watched, waiting for the rabbi to pass him by. Instead, Jesus stopped right in front of Matthew's booth. Um, rabbi? Jesus looked directly at Matthew, reading every single thought in his heart. Nice day. Not too hot. Not too cold. Jesus kept his gaze fixed directly on Matthew's face. Come, follow me. Shocked, Matthew looked around. The crowd has fallen away. Who? Me? Jesus nodded. Matthew gaped. He had no doubt in his mind that Jesus knew every single thing about him, even everything he'd done wrong. But still, Jesus wanted Matthew to join him. Oh, well, yes. Matthew found himself leaping up from his seat and rushing out of his booth to join Jesus on the street. It's, um, nearly dinner time. Would you like to eat at my house? To Matthew's amazement, Jesus and his followers turned their steps towards Matthew's home. Quickly, Matthew sent out word to everyone he knew. Come to my house for dinner. Matthew, who had expected to eat alone, found himself hosting the most famous rabbi in town for dinner, along with a ragtag group of fishermen, tax collectors, and other outcasts. Jesus doesn't care what I've done. He thinks I can be better, that I'm worthy to follow him. But while Matthew rejoiced to discover his brand new identity, the city's religious leaders were horrified by what Jesus had done. They sidled up to Jesus' disciples. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? You know, that's a great question. Jesus overheard the religious leaders and answered the question himself. Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Preposterous. From then on, Matthew followed Jesus everywhere. With his own eyes, he had seen more of the things that Jesus had done than nearly anyone else. Near the end of his life, he wrote down all the stories he had witnessed and gathered so that others too could know Jesus. Before he was one of Jesus' disciples, Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors were kind of known for cheating people out of their money. Other people would have called Matthew a sinner, and it would have been true. Matthew, like everyone else in the world, sinned. Which means he did things that God wouldn't want him to do. I wonder if Matthew saw himself this way. A little gross? A little messy? He might have felt ashamed even worthless. But then something happened. He met Jesus. Jesus chose Matthew to follow him even though Matthew sometimes did things he shouldn't, even though he was a sinner. Jesus wants you to follow him too. 
He wants you to know him and trust him. And it doesn't matter what you've done or how you see yourself. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for your sins. You are forgiven and he loves you just as you are, mess and all. It's almost like when Jesus looks at you, he sees through the mess. He sees past your mistakes. He sees the individual you that God created. When you believe in and follow Jesus, it can help you see yourself through his eyes. Mmm, and it's so much better that way. The one thing to remember today is this. Knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. I definitely like myself a lot better without mayonnaise. Blech. Mmm. <laughs> I'll see you next time. surprise for you. Oh, what is it? I went to the candy store. The whole bag is filled with candy? Yeah. How much candy is that? 190 pounds. You bought 190 pounds of candy? They only sell candy by the pound at the candy store. Sorry, I weigh 190 pounds, so I had to buy 190 pounds. Candy by the pound does not mean how much you weigh. It's how... How much did that cost? $7.99. Oh, 
per pound, so $1,518.10. John, that's too much. No, don't worry. I got you your own. You what? Oh. Surprise! I guess your weight. Thank you. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. You know Brandon. I do. He's a terrific guy. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Wait, are you okay? I know it is concerning, yeah. but I was really digging deep into my own soul, my own psyche, if you will, and pondering this question: Who am I? Ooh, that is a good question. Right? Like, who am I really? Am I just some silly guy who hosts the most amazing show on earth? I get it. Sometimes I wonder if I'm just a more trustworthy version of a silly guy who hosts the greatest show on earth. You wonder that too, huh? Yeah. Did you come up with a solution? No, but I think I came up with a solution. That's what I just There's said. only one place you can look to truly find out who you are. Your heart? No, not your, no, the internet. Oh. Kids, always ask a parent, teacher, or guardian before going on the internet. There's some bad stuff out there and we want you to be careful while surfing. And remember. Don't do as John do. Okay, I found this great website called Find Out Everything You've Always Wanted to Know About Yourself. Dot com? No, dot dwarf. Dot dwarf? It's a new one. Yeah. All right. <sighs> okay, now we just enter in our information and we'll find out everything we've always wanted to know about ourselves. Okay. What is your least favorite vegetable? Oh, yeah. Uh, which animated movie do you think is the best? Your favorite number? I like Roman numerals. Hmm. Now hit enter. Whoa! I'm worth $20 million! I own a pig ranch in Montana. I was born in 1798! My great uncle invented styrofoam! My favorite food is vitamins! I won an Olympic medal! I composed the theme to Star Wars! I could already be a winner! My real name is Fred! Wow! Wow! This was not helpful. Not any of that was true. Nope, none of it. Yeah. Kids, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. And remember, there's a star in my hand. I still don't know who I am, Brandon. Yeah, me either. <sighs> Can we play a game to help? A game, you say? Yeah, why are you yelling? I love games! Yes, it's a game I like to call. Okay, here's how we play. On the monitor next to us, we're going to see extreme close-up pictures of parts of our faces. All we have to do is decide if it's a picture of me or a picture of you. Great. Uh -huh. Let's see how well we know ourselves. Yeah, get ready to play along out there as well. Okay, ready? In three, two, one, go! Oh my. Oh, man. Is that a lip? I think it's a lip. I think that looks like my wry smile. No, 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 no. That's, is that your eye? That's my eye? That, I'm looking at your face. I think that might be your eye, your closed eye. That's Brandon's eye. All right, let's see. Who is it? Oh, it's oh, you. Oh, no. We're, we're both wrong. Okay, okay definitely great. not an eye. All right, that's okay. hard. Okay, let's see the next one. Oh, that's gross. Oh, that's a nose. That's is that a, a nose? nose? I think it's an ear. I think it's a nostril. No, it could be an ear. It's, I think it's ear, and I don't have any hair in my ear, so I'm thinking this is John. Is it, okay. Okay, I'll say it's me, too. Okay, let's see. No. Oh! Wow. We don't know ourselves at all. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, here we go. Go for another one. All all right. Right. Now that's an ear. That's an ear. Okay. The that's an ear canal right there. That's me because there's very little hair. Okay, that's I mean, Brandon's ear. Let me look ear. at your hair. Oh, you don't, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> you don't have a lot of I'm hair. Letting you, I'm going to call that as Brandon's ear. That's me. Too. Okay, here we go. Oh! John! <laughs> wow! Man, we are not good at this game. Well, look at, look at all of my stri- <laughs> oh, ah! I know who this I is. Know. Easy. <laughs> who is that? That's got to be my eyebrow. Look What's at that, eyebrow? because look at the gray. Oh, okay. And look how crazy these hairs yes. are. That's my Ivy. eyebrow. John's eyebrow. <laughs> Yay, we got one. All right, here we oh, go. Oh, did you go for a five? No, I oh, okay. sort of. Whoa, oh! oh! So you didn't get right? enough sleep. <laughs> That's you, because my eyes are blue, right? Uh, are my I guess. eyes blue? But where are the glasses? Oh, it's a good point. Although I think I see a stray gray eyebrow, so that's gotta be me. You think so? Okay. Yep. Wow. Oh, I thought 
thought my eyes were blue. Yeah. This whole time, they look green close up. I know, it's crazy. All right, you're okay. right, they should have been glad. I don't even know what that this is. is. That could be the picture of a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> is that a face? Okay, that's, I'm gonna say that's my cheek. No, that's, no. Oh, what? that's my dimple. Oh, that's your dimple. Yeah, me. John's dimple. No! Is it your dimple? Where? I guess so. Okay. I guess so. Okay, here we go. Next. Uh, I think, okay, so that is my nose. That's a it looks nose. Looks like it. Uh, let Should me be see. my nose. Yeah. You have a divot. I, I'm your, rounded. That's your nose. That's my nose. Hey! Boom. Shiny and oily. It's coming. It's like 3D almost. Yeah. Wow. We know ourselves <laughs> half decently. Yeah. <laughs> Better than we thought. Yeah, better than we thought. I mean, at on least the on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if only there was someone out there who could help us discover who we really are on the inside. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh look, look one, one, more, one picture. more picture. Who is that? Oh, I know who that is. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's Bible Story Time with Kelly! Hey, fellas, how's it going? Pretty good. What deep insights do you have for us from the Bible today? Well, we're talking about one of the more famous disciples of Jesus. In fact, this dude wrote one of the four Gospels. Thaddeus. No. Simon the Zealot. Nope. Austin. There was no disciple named Austin, to my knowledge. Oh. No. We're talking about Matthew. Matthew, right. You were way off. Let's jump right in. Okay, so everywhere Jesus went, people would marvel at his teachings. Oh! And people would especially delight in all the many miracles Jesus would perform. People loved him. One day, Jesus was walking into a town where he met Matthew. The problem was, people did not like Matthew at all. Why? Well, because he was a tax collector for Rome. Tax collectors were looked down on because not only did they collect money for taxes, they would take extra money to keep for themselves. When Jesus approached Matthew, people may have thought Jesus was going to put Matthew in his place. You're out! But instead, Jesus went up to Matthew, a guy who no one liked or valued, and he said, Follow me. Now, this probably blew Matthew's mind. Jesus, miracle worker and teacher, was asking Matthew to follow him. Jesus valued Matthew when no one else would. And Matthew got up and he followed Jesus. Now, when the other people in town saw this happen, they were, they were confused. Huh? The religious leaders were beside themselves in anger. They couldn't understand why Jesus would spend any time with someone as disliked as Matthew. But even worse, Jesus went to Matthew's house and hung out with a bunch of other people in town that the religious leaders considered the worst kind of people. I mean, Jesus basically went to a party with all the troublemakers. And the religious leaders, well, they asked Jesus' disciples, why does your teacher eat with sinners and tax collectors? But when Jesus heard this, he responded by saying, those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Yeah, definitely a mic drop moment. Jesus wanted the religious leaders to know, and he wants us to know, that people, no matter what they look like or where they come from or what they've done, are valuable to him. The end. So what do you think, fellas? Wow. Jesus shows up, and instead of seeing Matthew as just a tax collector or someone who cheats people, he sees him as valuable. Yeah, Jesus was like, hey, Matthew, 
You matter. Let's go hang. Exactly. I mean, Jesus hanging out with Matthew back then, that was mind blowing. But think about this. What do you think happened in Matthew's own heart? How do you think what Jesus did made Matthew feel about himself? If I were Matthew, I, I may have seen myself in a whole new way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Jesus, this guy I've heard about, was totally awesome, wants to spend time with me, I, I think it would have an effect. Right? Well, guess what? Jesus does think you're valuable, and he does want to spend time with you. He wants you to believe in him and follow him. That can change your whole world. And not just your life now, but for eternity. Following Jesus not only helps us live a life that honors God, but it brings us back into a relationship with God that lasts forever. That is very cool. Thanks, Kellen. You're welcome, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. So, buddy, does that shed any light on you figuring out who you really are? Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, I'm more than my job. Uh -huh. I'm more than what other people think about me. Yes. I I'm even more than what I might think about myself. Yes. I think after learning that story, I would describe myself Wait. as... Reveal the question. How would you describe yourself? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, you can describe yourself on the outside, like... Do you have long hair, short hair? What color are your eyes? Or you could describe yourself in other ways. Uh, what kind of movies do you like to watch? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you good at? What do you wish you could do better? Yeah, talk about it together. How would you describe yourself? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So -so Show! I've never eaten spaghetti before. I wrote the song Do What Diddy. I have knives for toes. <laughs> My mother used to be a puma. I actually like soccer. Damn! The first letter of the alphabet is Z. <laughs> now it's just random fact time. <laughs> this computer is older than I am. Striped polka dots confuse me. Blue paint makes me sneeze. Lassie was a boy. 